made it to another episode of On Top and Hot. Me too. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Wednesday, June 12th. Which means I should probably remind you of my live streaming event tomorrow. Do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co-host Taylor, we go on live for about an hour and a half now, and we are taking requests from investors like you. I share hot penny stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to bring us a hot penny stock and we'll share it with everybody else. I'll go over the information, Taylor will go over the chart, and we'll give you our opinions, whatever that's worth to you. Now I gotta tell you, just to be fair, if you're gonna drop your ticker in during the show, chances are I will never get to it. The reason is I put up an announcement about this video earlier in the day. I want people to show up. Well, they start dropping their tickers in then and I do go by first come, first served. So by the time four o'clock rolls around, I've got all the tickers I can handle. So I apologize if you're dropping your ticker during the show and I'm not looking at it. But I'm saying all of this to let you know, if you want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early, before four o'clock. Wherever you follow me, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, I'm going to put up an announcement there. As soon as you see it, drop your ticker in. Guaranteed I'll get to it. And it's going to give me more time to go over the information for you. That's 4 o'clock, Thursdays, every Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. So what I like to do on this show is to share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock that I find through the day. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under 5 bucks. And that's the only criteria. And it doesn't matter what market they're on. And they're on every single market. Well, I'm constantly looking for hot penny stocks. Stocks that have the potential to make us money. And I've got one for us. This is, oh, am I going to pronounce this right? Long Everin Inc. Ticker LGVN. Now, this company is ticking a lot of the boxes for a hot penny stock. She's got a hot chart. Oh my God. She is set up for a breakout right now and a ton of volume just came in. She's got a low float. She has just had about a 900% increase quarter over quarter on her revenues. I mean, there is so much going on and yes, we have catalysts. We've got lots of potential here and I'm going to share it all with you right now. So ticker LGVN finished the day at $1.75. Oh man, still climbing. I found this stock when she was down at 50%, checked back at 80, saw her at 90. We're now at 113% and still climbing. She is up 93 cents today. This is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ. I prefer trading these penny stocks on major exchanges because there's a lot of benefits that come with it compared to the OTC. One, they're free to trade. There's no transaction fees on the major exchange. Two, you can trade them pre-market, after-market, and there's a lot of runners pre-market. You can never do that with OTC. There's a heck of a lot more money, heck of a lot more volume up on the major exchange, and a heck of a lot more rules, which is good. It is hard for the companies, but it's better for us. It keeps the companies doing the right thing. So what is LGVN all about? Well, I'm going to start with this description here, and then we're going to go dive into a CEO shareholder letter. He gives us a lot of information in that, and I think it's better than going to the website. If you want to know about their drug programs, definitely go jumping on over to the website. There's a lot of technical information over there. I am going to share their drug programs with you, but I'm going to try to stay away from all those big technical <laughs> words, if you don't mind. So, the company is a clinical stage biotechnology company that develops cellular therapies for aging related and life threatening conditions in the United States and Japan. The company's lead investigational product is the Loma Cell B, an allergenic stem cell formulation sourced from the bone marrow of young healthy adult donors. It is conducting phase one and phase 2A and phase 2B clinical trials in various indications such as age-related frailty, Alzheimer's disease, and hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Now, we're going to get more information about this as we roll along. I have dove over here to their website, and I've gotten this news press. Now, this is a little old, but it's very current, and it is going to be updated with more recent news that we've got as well. 
So this came out on the 8th of April. As I said, this is a shareholder letter coming from the CEO. The CEO says, I am delighted to mark my first anniversary as CEO for the company this month. Upon joining the company, I set out with a clear objective to develop a strategic roadmap building on the strength of our science while acknowledging the realities of the capital market environment. The company's foundation is in cutting edge cellular therapy research, coupled with the promise of Loma Cell B, which positions us to profoundly impact patients' lives for the better by addressing numerous unmet medical needs with the U.S. market potential opportunities of up to approximately 10 to $18 billion. Now, that's a huge statement there, folks. They are dealing with drugs that are going to meet unmet medical needs. That is to say there's no competition out there. There are no drugs for these needs. And what's the market? Well, between 10 and 18 billion. And if there's no competition and this company gets a drug out there, that's all theirs. They'll start pulling that in until competition comes out. They go on to tell us that their focus remains steadfast on raising the funds necessary to continue their operations. And you'll read more about that in this. We're not gonna go through all of that. But raising capital is a serious problem right now with a lot of companies on the OTC market. And we could see a lot of companies just fall away because they don't get the capital that they need. And it is a pressing issue with this company, but as you're gonna see in more recent news, this problem is being resolved. They go on to tell us their lead investigational product is Loma Cell B, which is derived from culture-expanded medicinal signaling cells that are sourced from bone marrow of young, healthy adult donors. We believe that by using the same cells that promote tissue repair, organ maintenance, and immune systems function, we can develop safe and effective therapies for some of the most difficult diseases and conditions. In 2024, we are focusing our efforts on two of our most promising programs, hypoplastic left heart syndrome called HLHS and Alzheimer's disease. Now this is as technical as we're going to get and it's not even technical. <laughs> HLHS is a rare pediatric disease affecting approximately 1,000 live births per year in the U.S. Did you hear that? That's their market. 1,000 customers a year. And this isn't a drug you prescribe. You use it one time and that's it. You're done with it. Why would they invest millions and millions of dollars and who knows how many man hours developing a drug that's only going to service 1,000 people a year? Well, there's a great strategy behind this, actually. First off, how many other companies are going to want to invest millions of dollars and who knows how many man hours to develop a drug for 1,000 people? Probably none. So that opens up the market for them to create a drug that will have no competition. But still, 1,000 people is not going to make them any money. Ah, remember what they said back here, that they have many unmet needs. They're focusing in on two. So this is how it works. Let's say you have a pain relief drug that works on headaches, but it also works on back aches, earache, toothaches, all sorts of body aches. Well, the more indicators you give the FDA, that's what they call those. Everything it can handle is an indicator. If you give them 10 indicators, they have to prove that each indicator works. And that makes your trial very, very long. It is best to come in with a one indicator, have them approve that, get on the market, and then while you're making money with your product out there, Bring it back in and say, this also works on backaches. And let the FDA start working on that. And now it gets a head start with its phase trials because it's already proved it's safe and some of its efficacy. So it's not going to take as long to get that through. Then they have a second indicator. And that's what I think they're doing. By getting a drug approved that they have no competition in, they're going to get a lot of backing from the, uh, the FDA. The results of our successful phase one trial showed 100% transplant-free survival of all subjects of up to five years of age. And that's who their patients are for, babies and children up to five years old. Based on historical data, 
approximately 20% of patients would normally have expected to receive a heart transplant or would have died by the age of five. In response to our positive initial data, the FDA awarded HLHS program with three distinct and very important designations, rare pediatric disease designation, orphan drug designation, and fast track designation, each of which offer benefits to our development and regulatory processes. This is great folks. Every single one of those designations actually push it ahead of the line. The FDA is clearing the road for them, making things easy, trying to get this out on the market as fast as possible because there is nothing else out there. So that is excellent. At present, we have completed approximately 60% of the enrollment of our randomized phase two clinical trial. Now that's a problem. You can't finish your trial until you have enough participants. They've only got 60% of their enrollments. They got to get the other 40%. We expect this trial to finish enrollment in 2024 with data read out at the end of 2025. We are laser focused on the effective execution of this program and we will be communicating with the FDA regarding the potential to use this trial as a pivotal trial for accelerated or final approval of Loma Cell B for HLHS. So again, they could get this out there a heck of a lot faster. Phase one is the safety, making sure you don't die from it or get perpetual diarrhea or something. And that takes about a year. Phase two is efficacy. How well does your drug work on what you say it works on? That takes normally three years. And then you have phase three, which is pitting your drug against all the competitors out there. And that can take up to five years unless there's no competitors. Then you get out of there pretty bloody quick. And that's what we're looking at here. The other indicator they are working on is Alzheimer's disease, and there are a lot of people interested in this one. In our Alzheimer's disease program, we recently completed our phase 2A clear mind trial with 49 patients that builds upon our successful phase 1 trial. As such, we are aggressively pursuing partnerships and funding opportunities to move this exciting program forward. Given the massive unmet need presented by Alzheimer's disease, large resources are potentially available from the federal and private funding sources. We will be heavily focused on seeking partnership opportunities and or non-dilutive funding for this program. So you've got an idea now. They've got a couple of indicators they're working on. They are getting the assistance of the FDA. These are huge markets and really it looks like the one drug they are just using to open up the door so that they can get that out there for a lot of other indicators, which I haven't mentioned in this news press, but you can find probably by going over to their website. All right, as I said, we're going to get more information about what's going on with this company and their drugs and their financial situation when we look at the news. So let's go take a look at the stock now. So taking a look at the relative volume for LGVN, holy cannoli, look at that explosion, folks. I overmissed this today, overmissed, overlooked. Yeah, I didn't see it. I do now. On an average, over the last 30 days, she's been doing about 377,000 shares. Today, she exploded with 65 million shares. Tell me things aren't happening. Let's go take a look at that share structure for LGVN. Outstanding share count, right? Now, they tell us here that the outstanding share count is 4.8 million. Well, they did a reverse stock split uh, not too long ago. I do believe it was a one in 10. This number is wrong. Now, I'm not saying it's one tenth of this, but when I did dive into their most recent financial, I found this. They tell us right here, as of March 31st, 2024, they had 1,034,000 shares outstanding. So we have a much better float than it appears here. And that was a good float. And that's not even the float. That's the outstanding share count. The float is normally less than the outstanding share count, normally considerably, but I have no clue what the float is here. All we know is that the outstanding share count is just over a million. Now, in saying that, if the float is under one million, we have a problem. 
On the NASDAQ, they have a minimum criteria for the float. You cannot have less than 1 million. And we've got 1,034,000 outstanding. So unless the insiders own 34,000 shares, we are in hot water right now. But that's an easy problem to fix, so we're not going to be happy about it. They're going to have to do a public offering. Just put more shares on the market and increase that float, which is obviously going to lift the float up. But as long as they don't overdo it, it shouldn't be too bad. But as of right now, I don't know if they're going to be adding any more here soon. I don't know how long they've got to do it. I haven't seen anything about their float yet. Market cap for the company. We are just under $4 million. Financials for the company. All right, looking back over the last four years, wow, we've had a serious drop. Four years ago, we were at $5.6 million. I know that's millions because they tell me up here, I got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts we're looking at. The next year during COVID, she dropped down to 1.3, then down to 1.2. And at the end of 2023, we were down to $709,000. Thankfully, we are pulling in profits, but that's a bit scary. Let's take a look at our quarterly reports. Well, we've had something change here. You can see our revenues were falling from 279 all the way down to 63,000. And we started losing money. Getting that low was getting critical. That was at the end of 2023. First quarter of 2024, look, we exploded. We jumped from 63,000 up to 548,000, which is almost 900% gains quarter over quarter. And it's getting close to the annuals we had last year of 700. And I mean, that's just one quarter. So things are definitely looking better and the profits are looking much better. Take a look at that balance sheet. Not forgetting those three zeros over here either. We have 1.9 million in the bank. Total assets, we have 9.6 million. Total liabilities, 6.6 million, which means we've got positive stockholder equity here of $3 million. So we've got a low, low float. We are making revenues. The revenues just jumped by virtually 900%. We are making profit. Everything is looking pretty decent with this company. We just need to know what the catalyst is. Don't rush me. I'm getting to it. Disclosures for the company. All right. I did go through these. The only ones I really want to mention is this 424B3 and this S1A. Both of these are talking about putting more shares on the market, but it's not a public offering. They are reselling shares for an insider, for another investor. They're reselling his shares, which shouldn't change the float as far as I know. All right, let's go take a look at that news now. So we have gone back here, not very far, to March, March 10th of this year. The company has been changing their directors. Directors are very important in a company. They're like your think tank, you know, that you get a lot of ideas and direction from your directors. Then we had their financial reports come out on the 14th of May. Some good information in there if you want to get the details. Then we had a piece of news that came out on the 3rd of June. The company announces contract development and manufacturing business and first contract. We are going to jump into that. That's the one I want to share with you. And then we had a recent piece of news that came out yesterday. The company announces completion of successful investigator meeting for the ongoing phase 2B clinical trial evaluating Loma Cell B. And basically, it's just that things are progressing. There haven't been any final decisions made yet, but everything looks really good. It is moving forward with the FDA's help. All right, let's dive into this one piece of news right here. Oh, and it took away my highlights. That's okay. I knew what I was going to read. So they tell us here that the company has entered into a contract manufacturing service agreement as a new business line and has the potential to generate approximately four to $5 million in annual revenue. Four to five million. Right now, we are just at about a half a million for one quarter. So this would be a nice bump in revenues. This is their first manufacturing service contract, which has been signed with Secretum Therapeutics. Now, what they're basically doing here, the company, 
this company has a manufacturing facility that they're not using. So they're basically letting this company use it and they're going to get revenues from it. So it doesn't cost this company anything for this deal. They're just letting a company come in and start manufacturing their stem cell drugs. That's what this other company works with, which is going to be a perfect alignment with this company with their drugs. So maybe in the future, we could see more going on with the two, though they haven't mentioned anything about that right now. They're just talking about manufacturing these drugs for this other company, which is going to bring revenues in for them. So as far as I'm concerned, this is ticking all the boxes. But there's one extra piece of information which really made me want to share this with you. All of this is good, but was it good enough? Well, maybe not, but I got a cherry to put on top of this, folks. I just stumbled across this information. This was not in their press release. This was not in their filings. I just happened to stumble upon it when I was looking at Google. This is Zach's research. This is over at Zach's.com. They compile a lot of different types of information on stocks. And what they're doing here is showing us price targets from a variety of different analysts. And they have covered three different analysts here. The three analysts are HC Wainwright, Maxim Group, and then they say they can't tell us the third one because some of these analysts want to keep their identities confidential. But this is what we got here, folks. The stock right now is at what price? $1.81. They tell us the price target amongst all of these analysts, the lowest average price target is $14.05. The high is $15.15 and the low is $12. Now, did this just come out? No, look at this. Three months ago, they were saying it. Two months ago, one month ago, a week ago, today, it is a strong buy. And with the chart now set up the way it is, the way it's closed in on the 200 day SMA and all the volume coming in today, I think this could be something to be watching. We are talking about over a 15, what, what do they say here? Uh, between 1,300 and 1,700% gains if she reaches up to those points. And this is from analysts. They have nothing to do with the companies. They're not paid to say this stuff. They're unbiased opinions. We've got three of them here, all green on the same sort of price. I find that exciting. I also find the chart exciting. Let's go take a look at that now. Y'all ready to do some charting? Me too. <laughs> We're taking a look at ticker LGVN and we're going to chart this on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. Got this opened up to a one day, one year chart. And as you can see, it's been in a real bad downtrend for the entire year, but it's not as bad as they paint it. They tell us our 52 week high a year ago was $40 and our 52 week low, which just hit in the last couple of days is at 77 cents. It's not that bad. Remember I told you we had a reverse split with this company. Well, it happened at the end of March. It was a one in 10. Well, rather than put one big green bar on the board here showing the price kicked up 10 times, they put a normal bar there and then everything on the chart from this day back, all of it, 100% of the chart is then multiplied by the ratio of the reverse split. In this case, it's a one in 10. So everything from this day back is multiplied times 10. So that 52 week high, which says $40 has to be divided by 10. All these numbers do. So the true high on that day was $4. Folks, that's not right. That's misinformation. It's going to mislead people worse than fake freaking news. Think about the poor guy that comes into this company a year from now, looks back to see what the high was and he sees $40. He has no clue the chart has been adjusted. It's not like they put some token mark on it anywhere. You don't know. I don't like it, but that's what they do. Now I've drawn up some resistances here for us off of the yearly chart. We'll get some closer ones when we get down to the smaller time frames. Right now I have got a resistance here at roughly $5, another one at $960, one at $1590 and one all the way up at 2150. 
Now, what I see here is we've had some strong days of volume, just a few, but one of them was today, the strongest day of volume in the entire year. We also have a 52 week low. Now a 52 week low can be a trend change. If a company has value, that is a flashing for sale sign. People hunt these 52 week low bubbles. They pop up, they go check out the fundamentals. If they see value in the company, if they determine this is undervalued, you will see it bouncing off of that low bubble and starting to climb. This can be the floor right here. The other thing I notice on this yearly chart, let me back this up just a little bit. This here, that purple line is my 200 haul. You hear me talk about the 200 haul a lot. It's actually my favorite SMA. The 200 haul is just like your 200 day SMA. They both take 200 days of prices and average them out. But the 200 haul puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with two long-term lines on your chart, both of them having equivalent power. They're both very strong SMAs, MAs, moving averages. Well, what I look for is my price to be above my 200 haul and it's purple on my chart when it's falling. Soon as it turns blue, it is then starting to climb. Well, what we see in like 80% of the time, when my 200 day haul turns blue, the price, if it's right above it, starts to climb immediately and pushes hard and fast towards the 200 day SMA. Well, right now that 200 haul is flat, flat as a pancake. I expect tomorrow it is going to go blue and turn and this price is going to start to push up. That's, that's my feeling. Looking at our oscillators, we can see that our PPO is just now starting to come up, about ready to cross that line right here. And she's been on a downtrend for a very, very long time here, folks. And now it looks like she's about to break it and get on top. Our MACD, it too has been underneath the signal line. This line right there, it's been underneath that for months and months and months. And it is just now about to come up on top of it. That's a nice break. And look at our RSI. That's the floor, 30. It does go all the way down to zero, but we get a hard warning that 30. It has been under 30 and hanging around 30 for a very long time. And right now she has busted loose, coming from 24 all the way up to 62. That's incredible, folks. That is a change going on right now. And that's when you want to watch a stock when it's changing on the charts. All right, let's come on down to our 20 day. No, we're gonna come down to our four hour, six month. So there's our supports and resistances. You can see we are in a strong downtrend here. We have had some breakthroughs, not breakouts. She got up on top of the 200, pushed up fast and hard, but came down just as hard and fast. She has fallen down to this strong resistance this is $5.10 roughly, and she was there quite a while. Got real close to our 200 here, and rather than jump towards it, she pushed away. We didn't like that, but it was probably because everybody knew the reverse stock split was coming, and nobody was eager to be pushing the price up. After the reverse split, you had a lot of people who were upset, and it kept falling. Now, right now, at this very moment, look, look. Our 200 haul has just turned blue. And when did it jump? When did the stock jump? She came down on top of the purple. And as soon as that 200 haul went blue, boom, she took off directly from the 200 haul through every single SMA, the nine, the 20, the 50, and the 200 catapulted way above the 200. She started off down here at 88 cents and went up to $2 and 32 cents. That's got to be at least 150% run right there. She's pulled back and right now she's at a dollar 81. Maybe not. I can't see what the aftermarket is. She closed at a dollar 81 today. This is looking beautiful folks. This is hot. Our oscillators, the PPO is going to the moon. MACD is going to the moon. Green bars are getting bigger and bigger. Whoa, look at that RSI. She came from the floor of 30 and she is clear up there at 82 right now. That is a hot chart, folks. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. Just getting hotter. So she's fallen. We, we see a breakthrough and back down here onto what? Onto what? She is floating on her 200 day haul. 
all the way down this hill, laying on it. She then ran from it, busted through our 200, came back down to the hall, laid on it some more, had another breakthrough, and then what? She did something strange. She dropped way down here to this 52 week low out of the clear blue for no reason, right? She's just floating. She's doing normal here. Dun, da, da, dun, 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 dun. And then all of a sudden, something strange. Well, you know what this is? This is what I call the crouch and pounce. When you're doing absolutely nothing, you're just minding your own business, going along, and then all of a sudden, you hit this real deep low. I expect, I watch for the pounce. I think of this as a cat ready to jump. They crouch down just a couple of inches to jump a couple of feet. Well, that's what we got here. She was breaking through the 200 and then all of a sudden, without any warning, she goes into this big drop to a 52 week low, which this company has value. She went sideways, pre-market, aftermarket, vice versa, whichever. The day started and she took off. Here come our value shoppers. They came into the picture, pushing this all the way up. She climbed virtually all day, came down, and it looks like she's pushing aftermarket as well. Look at all of our SMAs. There's our 200 haul, 50 and 20. Every single one of them crossing the 200 right now. Those are all power signs. Everything looks great on the one hour chart. It is looking like a rocket stock. We expect a rocket stock to do what? run out of fuel as it's climbing and then come crashing back down to earth. But I'm thinking because of the price targets on this company and the potential she has and the revenues now starting to come in, ah, she may not crash back down to earth. She'll pull back and find herself a strong resistance, a strong support. Speaking of a strong support, let's see if we can find one here. We've got one right there. I'm going to have to back up even further. I'm going to have to go all the way back to my four hour chart. Let's see if we can get one right in this area. We've got one right here for sure. Everything is sitting on top of that and we banged our heads on it there. That's at 192. We're at 181. Let's get another one here then. Uh, right about there. Yeah, that, that looks real good too. That is bringing this down, it tagged onto that, and all of this is sitting on top of it. So that brings us down to 148. Let's come down to our one hour chart. So we're up here at 181, 187, somewhere. I gotta get to the aftermarket hour and see where we're at. And we've got a strong support at $1.98 and another strong support at $1.61. All of our oscillators are cooking. Look at this. Every single oscillator going to the moon and on fire. This looks great, folks. You can't lose if every oscillator is going to the moon. Take a look at our five day, five minute. Wasn't doing nothing, right? Minding her own business. Every single SMA is knotted up together in there. You can't tell which one she's laying on. And then she changed. Without any cause or reason, she falls the entire day hitting this absolute low, a 52 week low. She came up off of that and slowly climbed until what about, uh, that is about, what's the time? 11, 11 in the morning. I didn't see any news at 11 in the morning. The shoppers got out of bed, saw the value sitting on the table. She jumped over the 200 and that was it. She jumped onto that nine day SMA, launched up through our first strong resistance, hitting 178, falling back. I'm not quite sure what she's bouncing off of here. We got a lot of SMAs in there, our 50 and our 200 haul. She's bouncing off of both of them, flying on that nine day SMA. Look, she took a dip here after market when she hit 232, just down to the nine day. She didn't come to the 20 or anything else, just the nine day SMA got back on that nine day SMA, which means the price is very, very light. It's very buoyant. It wants to rise like helium right now. And all of our SMAs, including that 200, look at that 200. She took a slight dip here and now she's climbing hard. All of our SMAs are climbing hard. Our price is on top of the nine day floating light and easy. Our oscillators, um, they're cooling down. Our PPO is starting to come down, though it still has a lot of heat. Our MACD, which is a lot like our PPO, 
it's actually at a negative crossover and it's pulling down right now. And our RSI is pulling down a little bit, but it's still in the warm area. It's up there at 63. So the chart looks real good. The oscillators look a little weak. We had a ton of volume come in today. Look at this. And even after market, that is a lot of volume after market. This is one I would be watching pre-market tomorrow. Absolutely. To find a dip. If she's going to pull back, folks, the way this looks, I wouldn't expect her to come any lower than about $2. A buck 98 is where I got this drawn. That's ballparking it. So I would look for a bounce at around $2 if she decides to pull back. It looks really, really strong to me. So I like LGVN for all the right reasons. She's got a low float. She's had a strong increase in her revenues. She's just got a new contract and increase her revenues now to 4.54 to $5 million. Everything looks great, including the chart. I think it's worth a watch, but it's also worth some more due diligence. So jump in there and do some research, folks. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.